Do you know what the third most planted grape variety in the world is? We're going to talk all about it and taste a few wines. That's all coming up. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. And today we're going to be talking about Tempranillo. It's actually the third most planted grape variety in the world. I was actually quite shocked to find that out. I, th I think in past few years it was down to eight. Over 230 thousand hectares planted that's 578,000 acres most of that is in Spain but you're going to also see it in Portugal and all parts of the new world a little fun fact for you winers do you know that Spain actually has the most area dedicated to vineyards in the world even though Italy and France produces more wine Spain has more area dedicated to vineyards that's because there's a lot of vines spread out poor soils very low yield so let's get into Tempranillo it was the first red grape that I tasted outside of Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Pinot Noir when I was just starting my wine journey. Probably most famously found in the wines of Rioja, which for some fabulous wines, Ribera de Duero, and then it's planted all over the country. I've tasted also some excellent ones in Australia, and surprisingly, Mexico. In Baja, Mexico, there are some very nice producers. I don't think I've had any in California that have really knocked my socks off. There's some excellent ones in Portugal as well. Another reason why you don't always see it just labeled as Tempranillo is it has so many different names. In addition to Tempranillo, you can see it as uh, Tinto Fino, Tinta del País in Spain. Also, I think Tinto Madrid. Tinta de Toro for the wines of Toro, Centibel, which we have here today. In Portugal, you're going to see it as Aragonés, and Tinta Joris. <laughs> see, my Portuguese was right there. <clears throat> I'm going to try something different. I'm going to shoot a tasting video closer up so you can see my facial expressions. I can't hide from you. I know I have small eyes, so sometimes it's hard to see me when I'm a little bit farther away. Little side note, one time I was in graduate school. I was kind of falling asleep. I was kind of dozing off. It happens sometimes when you're in class. And one of the professors told me to wake up. And I looked at her and I said, you know my eyes are always like this? <laughs> I don't think she said anything the rest of the semester. So let me know if you like this more close-up style of video. And while you're at it, I see a lot of you that watch the videos aren't subscribed to the YouTube channel. So why don't you subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the bell so you know when new videos like this come out. Academically, when I was studying Tempranillo, I was always told that it's the winemaker's great perfect balance of ripeness, acidity, it's got a shorter growing season, so it's a little bit easier to handle. Surprisingly, though, when I, I spent a lot of time in Portugal, and producers say that they have the hardest time with Tinta Jorris, which is obviously Tempranillo. One of the big criticisms also is Tempranillo doesn't have a uniform flavor profile that really depends on the oak aging, the winemaking style. I have to say that's, that's very true. For instance, in South Australia, I've tasted some really more red red fruit driven, more kind of elegant Tempranillo. In Portugal, I feel like it, the Tinta Roris, uh, the Aragonés has a little bit more acidity. Then in Spain as well, you know, Riojas can be extremely delicate. You know, Tempranillo is responsible for some of the, Spain's greatest red wines. Think uh, Ar López de Heredia in Rioja. Think Vega Cecilia in Ribera del Duero. Sometimes I find that Tempranillos can be a little bit too over oaked, a little too baked for my palate, a little too high alcohol. That's just me personally. So I've got three here. We're going to get into them. I'm really excited to taste three Tempranillos, three different vintages, fairly recent. Let's get into it. These wines were sent to me by the Spanish palate that helps kind of distribute these wines. It's not a sponsored video, but she did send these to me so I could taste them. First up, we have two Ribera del Dueros. This is the Bodegas Zifar, or in English you say Bodegas Zifar, Senda de los Olivos Crianza 2017, 100% Tempranillo. A little fun fact, in Spain you have different levels, especially in Ribera de Duero, Rioja, you're going to see Crianza, uh, Reserva, and then Gran Reserva. Crianzas are generally released a little bit younger, not aged as long as Reservas or Gran Reservas. Ribera de Duero, some of, some of the most iconic wines of Spain. I have to say, sometimes I have had problems with some of the iconic Ribera de Dueros. They're just a little bit too oaky, a little bit too powerful for my palate in particular. I think Ribera del Dueros, in a way, can start to resemble some Napa Cabernet Sauvignons. I'm looking forward to seeing what the Zifar, or Zifar, is going to taste like. I hope it's a little bit more dialed back because we're close up. You're going to see my facial expressions. Let's give this a go. When I poured these wines with my Corvin, automatically I could smell that they were pretty powerful wines. This has got a lot of black cherry, really a ripe wine. Some of those sweet red and dark fruits, black cherry licorice uh, it's smelling ripe it's smelling definitely like a warm weather wine fortunately 
There's just a kiss of wood, and the wood's not jumping out at me. Rivera del Duero is Appalachian, you know, a little bit north of Madrid. I've been there before. It's a little higher plateau. So while it's hot, there are cooler nights, which help retain acidity in the grapes. Wonderful area. I just hope to spend more time in Spain. That's one of my goals coming up. Smells like a big wine. Smells like a Tempranillo. The black cherry, licorice, tobacco. Smells ripe, smells big. Let's give this a taste, shall we? Good Tempranillos like this get me excited because for me, I was a little bit scared at first. It smelled pretty baked. It smelled pretty ripe. Not my type of wine. But the palate has enough fresh acidity to keep the wine a little bit more lively. It's not as sappy. It's not as big, not as heavy as I would think. The alcohol, well, I want to see alcohol. 14.5, still a big wine, but I don't feel it down the throat. It's not a warm glow down the throat. Mm. I don't really like this. We just barbecued some burgers over the last weekend. I could see this going really well with some uh, barbecued meat over the fire. Really nice, and since this is a Crianza, it's gonna be nicely priced. I think in Spain, we were talking about 13, 14 euros. For me, I would gladly pay it. Really happy with this point. Really, really happy. Uh, let's see if their next effort can live up to it. Next, we have the Bodegas Zifar, Caballero Zifar, Ribera del Duero 2016. Oh, so you have a 93 point James Suckling sticker right there. So this is a little bit of a step up, more expensive wine. I'm a little bit worried that usually, you know, expensive means a little bit more wood. Let's get into it. It's definitely darker in color. Really, really dark. Look at that bad boy. Let's see if we can see that. That bad boy versus this is the Criantha on the right. It's dark, inky purple. Let's give this a go, shall we? This has a, a lot of wood on it. A lot, a lot of wood. Scaring me a little bit. I have to admit, it's scaring me a little bit right now. Okay, some fruit's starting to come up. <sighs> Sometimes wines just can be all oak and no fruit. So I'm gonna get, you get a lot of vanilla, a lot of clove in this wine. Black cherry, mocha, chocolate type flavors. A little bit, it's really complex. I'll give it that. A little bit of savory and it's starting to, it's starting to win me over. That's the thing about these wines. These wines really need air, they really need, especially these big, huge wines, they need air, they need time to breathe, they need time to change. 14.5 alcohol, 15 months in oak. I don't know if it's American or French. I know that in Spain, a lot of times they do use American oak because Tempranillo has so much fruit, sometimes absorbs some of that American oak flavor. Full body, a lot of wood. Fortunately enough, there's going to be enough fruit here for people to enjoy it. I have to tell you, for my palate, it's not the type of wine that I want to drink, but I can see a lot of people really enjoying this because the wood offers so much structure, and it's there. It's, just, it's like a heavy seasoning. For instance, I don't like a lot of salt. I spend a lot of time in the Balkans where people love to put on tons of salt. It's like this. It's not overpowering, just a little more salt, a little bit more wood than I would like, but you cannot deny the quality and there's a lot of complexity here. This is definitely a Flintstones steak type of wine. Look, long finish, tons of complexities. This is definitely a good, a very good, very good wine. Uh, it's even higher in quality than the Criantha. Just for my palate personally, I would like to drink the Criantha. I would like something with a little bit less wood. But I have to say, every time I go back to it, this is pretty darn good. This thing about good wine, I like complex people. Can't always make a first impression. You've got to go back to them. you got to have more conversations with them. you got to give them a little bit of a chance. You know, it's starting to grow on me, actually. Like I said, the wood's tuned up a little bit high, but, I, I, you know, it's starting. I'm starting to like it a little bit. Let's move on, shall we? This is a wine I'm excited to try because it's got a beautiful label. This is the Bodegas Garcia de Lara. This is the La Viña La Cueva Colora. Thinthibel, 2018, 12 months in French and American oak, made from old vines, Thinthibel, also known as Tempranillo. It's a little bit lighter in color than the other two. Let's give it a go, shall we? It's from the town of Toledo. It's so funny. I live, I growing up, I lived near a town called Toledo, Ohio, named after Toledo in Spain, but uh, obviously nowhere is beautiful. Let's give this a smell. So, the La Cueva Calora. I wonder if they use stems when, when they make the wine. I'll actually use some of the stems when they ferment, because I get this kind of stemminess, this earthiness. The wood doesn't show up as much. A little bit wilder, savage. You know, when I think of Carignan Petit Verdot, I think of this wild, savage-type note. The stems really come out. Meatiness, some black cherry, some red plum-type flavors. Also incredibly complex. This is a pretty geeky wine, too. The first two are going to be more crowd-pleasers. Almost everyone's going to like them. Fruit, everything. This this one got a little more earthiness to it. Spicy. What's the alcohol on this? 14.5. All of them 
This one, I definitely get more of the earthy tones, more of the peppery notes, stuff that I kind of like. The fruit, the oak is more so. Actually, it's not very oaky at all. I was a little bit scared when I saw the 12 months American and French oak. I thought it would be a little bit much. Big time tannins, which Temper Neo can have. This one, definitely earthy. Wow, so funny. We have three very different wines here. The first one, the Criantha, really nicely balanced between fruit and wood. The next one, the Caballero Thifar, Thifar, <laughs> definitely has a little bit more wood, a little heavier, a little bit bigger. And then the La Cueva Colora, a little bit more earthy, a little more stemmy. So three very, very different wines. This third one is more of a geeky wine, more of a thinking wine. I really enjoy it a lot. I think that fans of wines from the Southern Rhone in France are gonna get off on this because it has some of those stemmy characters. I can see people that like some California Zin, although it's not as jammy, are gonna kind of go for this as well. So are you drinking Tempranillo? Do you have any favorite producers? I'd love to hear in the comments below. And if you're thinking about what video to watch next, check out my video about Spanish vermouth. I'll put that up there. I don't know a ton about vermouth, so maybe you'll have to teach me a few things. I'll see you soon.